Okay, um, so on behalf of SUNY OER Services, I want to welcome you to today's uh, brief webinar on Waymaker for Composition. I'm Michelle Beachy, um, a SUNY OER Services campus strategist, and I am joined today <clears throat> by Allison and Drunas. Um, and also Laura Murray is here as well from uh, Lumen Learning. So to start us off, um, I'm just going to begin by providing a brief overview of SUNY OER Services and the partnership that uh, SUNY has with Lumen Learning. And then we'll move into a live demonstration of Waymaker for composition. And we'll leave time for questions um, because we're a small group. If you do wanna jump in and unmute yourself if you have a question <clears throat> that you'd like to ask right away, feel free to do that. Um, and Laura will also be taking a look at the Q&A section. So if you have a question, you may um, go ahead and, and type that in there as well. Uh, but feel free anytime and we'll leave some time at the end as well for questions. Uh, over the last two years, more than 155,000 SUNY students and 1,000 SUNY faculty have embraced the freedom and power of OER. SUNY OER Services is building on that momentum, but we can't scale and sustain OER across SUNY alone. We need partners. Uh, Lumen is a leader in OER and a natural partner for SUNY given its experience, expertise, and leadership in open education. So together, we help campuses remove barriers, offer affordable and easy to access adaptable open course materials. Lumen Learning's vision is to enable unprecedented learning for all students and impact affordability, access, and student outcomes through effective adoption of open educational resources at scale. This aligns with SUNY's mission to offer the people of New York educational services of the highest quality with the broadest possible access. Lumen Learning is a partner that listens to the needs of SUNY faculty and responds to the latest educational technological capabilities, incorporates OER into those technologies, and uses data to improve OER efforts. Lumen's OER courses and platforms are available to all SUNY faculty and students at no charge through this system level partnership. SUNY OER services and the SUNY help desk provide direct support for faculty and students using Lumen's platforms and OER courses. And the way we provide that direct support is simply um, faculty are able to email us through um, oer at suny.edu. Um, and we have a dedicated help desk team that will filter any requests to SUNY OER Services or Lumen, whoever needs to be able to provide that support for you. So together, we are intensely focused on ensuring data-driven, high-quality OER is available to SUNY, SUNY students on day one, uh, that the resources are offered at an affordable cost, which in SUNY's case is free, very affordable, um, but the most important goal is to improve our student success. So in our um, ready to adopt OER course catalog, which can be found at oer.suny.edu, you can find peer reviewed course materials and ancillary teaching resources for over 70 subjects, all of which are available at no cost, again, to SUNY, SUNY students. Um, so briefly, we can take a quick peek into the catalog. Um, once you click into it, there's an area for if you want to search by the subject that you teach. Um, there you can search by keyword for courses or you can browse through courses here. These are, um, this is all of our SUNY catalog and it does show you which platforms they're available on, um, which we'll be talking about Waymaker specifically today. Um, so I'm going to turn the controls over to Allison for a demonstration of Waymaker. Um, which is courseware that combines OER with personalized le learning tools and analytics to strengthen student learnings and outcomes. So, Allison, take it away. Okay, so let's see. Um, let me make sure you can uh, see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? 
All right, so uh, let me get rid of this here. Okay, so uh, I thank you all for having us today. I appreciate all the work that's gone into making this webinar happen. And I want to uh, say hello to all the people who might be watching the recording of this. I'm a big proponent of asynchronous professional development because let's face it, it's noon. Most people are probably teaching right now. So uh, so welcome. And I, I'm showing you right now a uh, demonstration of what webinar, um, I'm sorry, what Waymaker looks like in Blackboard. So um, one of the things I want to uh, put out there is that one of the reasons why I work for this company is that I truly believe in what we're doing and that is that we're trying to make adaptive learners. We're not trying to make the adaptive system smarter. There are lots of platforms out there that uh, are focusing on what I joke around to call the ro uh, making the robot smarter. <laughs> we're not interested in making the robot smarter. We want to make people smarter. And uh, David Wiley says that uh, he said that just recently in New York that we want adaptive learners, not adaptive systems. So he obviously says it more eloquent than I do. When I was a teacher, I taught English composition for over 12 years in the Seattle area. I was an adjunct. Uh, we called them I-5 flyers, which is a highway that spans the entire coast of, um, of the West Coast from Canada to Mexico. So uh, maybe they're turnpike flyers out there in New York. Um, and basically, I taught mostly Comp 1 and Comp 2. And when I attended something like this, I was really interested to see how a uh, textbook or a text or courseware worked with what I already did as a teacher. Quite frankly, I thought what I had created was the best and I really just needed something that was a supplement because I had to have a textbook. Um, and as OER gained momentum in uh, Washington State, I was able to be a lot more creative um, with my uh, teaching. So I taught generally um, a, uh, what I called a, a writing process. Um, I, was, I focused on different genres. And so what I'm showing you here today is what a Waymaker course looks like when it comes through Blackboard. So I'm not gonna get into the technology of how that happens, but you have an entire service set up between the partnership of Lumen and uh, SOS, or I'm sorry, SUNY Open Services to make this happen as easy as possible. So we've got a turnkey option for you to get started with Open Educational Resources. That being said, you can complicate it as much as you want. And let me show you how to do that. And so one of the things that I'm showing you here right now is what it looks like in Blackboard. And the five things I want to show you during this time is what it looks like from a student design, which is what you're looking at right now, what our study plan looks like and what that means for the interaction for the student, our faculty tools, which appear here in this unpublished folder, and then the ancillary materials that you're probably used to with other publishers and how you can customize the course. And let me be very clear, I've, I was never happy with what any publisher delivered to me as a writer and as a writing teacher, because quite frankly, um, my materials were better. <laughs> and what I like about the open educational space is that anything that we've delivered to you, you can improve it. And then ultimately, if you improve it, hopefully you'll share it back. So I took some learning objectives that I found uh, via the internet uh, when, I, uh, when I looked for Composition 1 and SUNY. And I basically took the numbers off of the uh, learning objectives and I attached them to these different folders. So let me talk a little bit about what I think is the, the crucial part of our Comp 1 course. And this is basically the writing process. So as a student, I come into the writing process. And again, these can be renamed if you wanted to. Um, you could, any of the functionality of Blackboard, you can use if you wanted to call this the writing process at Erie Community College or Plattsburgh or Herkimer, um, the best part of my class, unit one, whatever you want to call it, you can do that in Blackboard. And so I'm going to stick with what Lumen's delivered. Um, and just, you know, rather than showing you how Blackboard works, you already know that. And I just want to give you a tour of what this looks like. So in every folder, you'll see a study plan and then more assignments than you can possibly teach in one semester. And the reason why we deliver more than you can possibly use is that we found that faculty members are more likely to delete than they are to build. And what I mean by that is basically building assignments. And so all of these are openly licensed. So if you want to customize them, if you want to delete them, if you want to change them, you're welcome to do that. 
We also have language of a rubric that you are welcome to use and adopt. And then every single folder or every single module, we call them, comes with a study plan and a quiz. And the quiz and the study plan work together in the following ways. So I'm a student, I come into my study plan. This is what we call it, by the way, for Lumen. Um, that's part of our Lumen language, but really from a student's perspective, it's the chapter or the reading or the unit or whatever you might name it as a teacher. I used weeks personally. I was like, week one, we're focusing on the personal essay. And what you're looking at here is what it looks like when a student has started to interact with the study plan. So a student comes in, they do a short reading, which is called our Why It Matters. And essentially, rhetorically, we're talking about uh, why it matters from a student's perspective, why we're making you take this course. You've been learning how to read and write all through high school, and now you get to college, and we're going to tell you that everything you learned in high school is wrong, and you need to write a different way. That was always my favorite um, way to give all of my my students a panic attack um, and then I told them basically that they already know how to tell stories we just need to have them get better at doing research and substantiating their ideas and we have some really great graphics in our courses all of our courses have alt text for the images and all of the uh, videos are captioned so we take care of that very basic accessibility pain point that happens when you're building your own courseware uh, or your own um, course materials and so you know accessibility is very important to us and i want to start with this particular um, section because this is a really nice graphic that's very simple that basically shows a recursive style of teaching writing, right? We teach writing like it's this linear process where you've got an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. But really, we know as writing teachers is that it's really pretty messy. And there are ways that we go back and we revise and we organize. So this entire course is built around this graphic. And we have a short little reading where the we introduce the students to that material. Then they take a very short uh, pre-diagnostic, pre-test and you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I was not a uh, multiple choice uh, type teacher. I never used multiple choice quizzes, um, but I did see the value in them when I was teaching students grammar and punctuation. That's um, what we used to say drill and kill, um, I think is actually really good practice. And, uh, and you know, even though there are programs now that can help students with their grammar and punctuation, you still have to be able to see your own mistakes and to, to understand them. And so um, the next point in the reading comes with, you know, just a very short bite-sized chunks really of the material because the hard part of teaching comp in my opinion, is the writing and the reading. And you can do all of that on your own. You can use your own materials. You can use all of the assignments that you've written as a teacher. And you've got a wealth of materials that you can use as readings. We have reading anthologies that come with this course, but you can also use your libraries. You can use LibGuides or LiveGuides, however your local librarian says that. You can also use this magical thing called the internet. You can use whatever you want in terms of the readings for your course. The readings, I will tell you, are a bit limited in the open space, but that's because of copyright. And let's face it, I, you know, I have many friends that make a living off of being writers, and that's how they make a living. So uh, to openly license some of their, their professional writing would take money out of their pockets. Um, and so what we have available is through the generosity of the open space, or um, quite frankly, it's in the public domain because people have died <laughs> as, more, as uh, happy as that. Okay, but the public domain also gets interesting. So see your local librarian if there are some readings that you would like to, that you don't see in our course. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of a tour, a very quick tour. The easiest way to see what this course is like is to get a cartridge from us or a file and we can set up the course for you. Every page has a license and attribution so you know where the material come from. If you've got that bright, shiny student that decides they want to become an English major, which is what one out of every 160 these days, they can go down that rabbit hole and see where these materials come from. And all of that is packaged here in the course with the, uh, what we call the study plan. The students get two attempts of the quiz, so the summative quiz or the quiz at the, the end of the, the study plan. They get two attempts, and this study plan works for metacognition. It basically helps the student interact with the materials and helps them become more in charge of their learning. 
So if we are, if we spend a lot of time in really caring about students, we also want to show them um, that there are some materials in the course that teaches them about how to use Waymaker. So we did a lot of uh, user studying and, and listening and uh, quizzing some of our uh, users. And they got back to us and they said, look, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time teaching students how to use Waymaker. So can you build a uh, student tutorial? So I include this as a crucial part of what some teachers are calling week zero. So if you have anything that you published before you're on contract, before you're paid to actually start teaching the class, um, I, I think we need, neg we need week negative one for teachers, honestly, if we're going to require these week zeros. But you can actually publish this and then you're good to go. You can have an assignment that tells your students, hey, classes start on March 13th and uh, we'll get started there. In the meantime, read through this module. This module gives them a little bit of information about the mindset behind Waymaker and just some tips on how to use the courseware. So again, if I didn't like the, you know, the organization of this course, I can use Blackboard and I can move things around. I can retitle any of these folders. And then uh, another aspect of the course that we include, and uh, we have a guide to writing, which is a handbook. So with the combination of, of Waymaker and our guide to writing, which is basically the replacement of any sort of handbook that you might use, um, there are a variety on the market. Most people who are interested in open educational resources have linked to Al Purdue. Um, and so um, I've included this into the course because there are lots of really great links that take you to all that you need to know for the uh, guide to writing or and punctuation and again it, it renders right on the page so the students never leave blackboard um, there's some practice right on the page this is not part of waymaker so i think of this as an extra handbook for students and so you've got the reading you've got this handbook and then you've got uh, the ability of the adaptive courseware so these are the benefits directly for students. So what's a direct benefit for teachers? Well, if we're focusing on how to save students time in their learning with the study plan where they can go back and they can say, okay, I need to spend more time on the reading process. I, 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 I've got a pretty good grip on organization, but I need more time on proofreading. The students can make that decision. A faculty member also benefits from the design of Waymaker. And this, frankly, is my favorite part of the courseware. Um, I taught online for a lot of years where I used a 50-page Word document that I copied and pasted. Um, I taught anywhere from six to seven sections as an adjunct. Um, uh, and so I had to do a lot of feedback. There were no Scantrons that could read essays. And so what I, I've liked from the very beginning with working with Waymaker is that we have this dashboard that's available to you as a teacher. So my students are interacting with the study plan. They're rocking it. They're, they're also struggling with some areas. They're really figuring out how to become better students in their own right. And then I get this quick dashboard. The Blackboard analytics that you might already like, those still work. So anything that you might love about the Blackboard analytics, that works fantastic. You can still use all of those. These, this dashboard specifically works with Waymaker. So I get a list here of my students. And let's say, you know what, um, Justin followed me to my class or to my office after teaching. Or let's say I teach online and Justin emailed me immediately after his quiz because he was not excited about a 75%. He's trying to become a nurse. He's got to get an A. Um, I've already interacted with Justin. I can dismiss this. I also like that this gives me a list of every interaction with my students. So if I was ever accused of not having real and substantive interaction with my students, I've got that record. Um, and so this, this is very helpful with the grade dispute, for instance. And now I'm left with these two students. All right, I've got 20 minutes before my next class and I've got to go to this innovative webinar from this great educational technology company that cares about saving money for textbooks for students. Um, you know, what can I do in that time? Well, I'm going to focus on Daniel here because Daniel's not doing so great. So when I expand on the 
um, on the analytics, I see here that on the one learning objective, um, he got zero out of two questions. So this is the self check. These are uh, formative assessments that the student has interacted with. Not doing so great. If I was teaching a hybrid course, this also might help me prepare for my face to face time. I could get a sense of how my students were doing on those self checks so that I know where to target that face to face time. But really what I want to do is I want to message this student and what Waymaker does is that it automatically populates um, the teacher's name, um, the teacher's contact information. Um, it it uh, populates the student's name, the learning objective, and I can also customize this. And so you can use it as is, but you can also type more information here and then you can see that's wonderful for a composition course right i'll just make up words um, so why don't i actually type an actual word um, and then i can send that message i can also send the student some tips and so this is another feature that i use constantly from that 50 page google doc where i or word doc that i copied and pasted from. I can send my students to the writing center, to the library, to the tutor center. Um, I can quite frankly, you know, uh, say to the student, hey, this is where you're struggling. Here are my office hours, or I'm available by Skype, I'm available by text, however you interact with your students. And the way that we have this set up, we've made it really easy for teachers to set up this communication. And you set up, you go through this five step process where you set up this messaging. And what this does is that this adds an additional way for you to interact with your students. And I won't walk through this entire process, but it's very simple. You set a mastery threshold, meaning, you know, what is the lowest that, um, that uh, you consider doing well in a course, we consider that an 80% or a B minus. You put in the start date and the end date. We've got some templated messages and just to uh, be very clear here with my composition teachers, if you teach, um, use the exclamation point very sparingly, you would not choose the coach personality. Uh, too many exclamation points. You would choose the, the advisor and there's a sample here. So it's just the facts, gets straight to the point. And what happens is that these, these, uh, um, these messages come to the students and they basically say, hey, students, you do a lot better on the quiz if you focus on the self checks. Um, we give you the option if you don't like the idea of automated messages, you can turn it off. I recommend trying it once. Why not? See if you like it. It's already built into the course. Give it a test drive. And if you hate it, you can turn it off and never use it again. Uh, and then you can customize these study tips and someone like myself or like or Laura can help you with uh, setting up this course um, so that it's easy. And then you have control of what that course looks like from term to term. You can set up your office hours and your supplemental help. And so, you know, basically when I, if I can wrap it up to make sure we've got time for closing remarks and questions, if I come back to this package, so to speak, that I'm getting as a writing teacher, I can add any of my own folders. I can add my own materials. So if I came into the success skills, let's say that I didn't want to use any of these assignments. Um, I can delete them. I can add to them and oh, making sure that I show you one other thing and then we'll take questions and uh, and wrap it up the faculty resources are here they're openly licensed we also offer a, uh, a PDF of the course um, and what that means is that it gives students the ability to download the course content most of the students download it on their phones and read it on their phones if that horrifies you um, I invite you to at least be happy that they have their materials especially as they are struggling possibly with connectivity or possibly sharing a computer at home with faculty or with their um, their family and so um, if you don't like what you see here I also um, pride myself on helping teachers figure out workarounds with Waymaker um, and figure out the best way to customize a course and so um, giving that we have four minutes left let me pause there. I'm happy to take a deeper dive um, with uh, demonstrations or um, more if there, there are questions. So let me stop here and uh, turn it back to let me stop sharing my, my screen and see if there are questions either from Brian or from anybody else on the call. That was 10,000 words in less than 14 minutes. Pretty good. <laughs> Any 
And if there are not any questions, um, just a reminder that if late, at a later point you come up with some questions and you are not sure where to turn, you can send an email right to oer at suny.edu. Um, and again, those get filtered um, via the SUNY Help Desk to either a member of the SUNY OER Services team um, and or uh, members of Lumen. Um, and as a reminder, if you want to take a look at one of the courses and you know just contact us, we can make sure we set you up so you can play around and take a look, see what you think. Um, and if there aren't any questions, we are ready to wrap it up and thank you everyone for listening. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. Thank thanks you. For, thanks right. to our thanks to our future watchers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.